Uh, so I have some opening remarks. Um, I'm going to pass it over to the chief to offer some some brief remarks as well. But in true gaggle, scrum whatever style, uh, we're here to answer largely questions about the historic day that we have here um, in Vermont with the passage of H72. So just to begin, I want to extend uh, some really very deep gratitude to the legislature for following the evidence and the data uh, to, to vote to override the governor's veto of H72, the bill that will allow an overdose prevention center pilot to be established here in Burlington. Um, as folks know, a mere two to three months ago, I was a state legislator. I was uh, very much an advocate and proponent and supporter of H72. It was sort of bittersweet to have to leave mid-session and not know the outcome of this. And I even uh, grappled with, do I hold my, my uh, state representative seat to make sure we had the votes to pass this? So I'm very proud of the fact that my uh, former colleagues were able to uh, really prevail and make sure that this critical life-saving piece of legislation um, was able to be passed at the end of the day. I also want to extend my gratitude to the many advocates who have persistently advocated for this life-saving intervention, including the former mayor, Mayor Murrow Weinberger, Burlington substance use policy analyst, Scott Pavick, former state representative, Selena Colburn, Chittenden County State Attorney, Sarah George, and so many dedicated harm reductionists. Uh, redu re reductionists. This veto override is a crucial next step towards establishing an overdose prevention center in Burlington. The office, my office will begin working with the necessary city departments, the city council and community partners to ensure that our community is ready and to ready to support the first overdose prevention center in the state of Vermont. H72 appropriates $1.1 million in the next fiscal year through the Vermont State Department of Health for the creation of an OPC pilot here in the city of Burlington. And with that funding commitment, it goes all the way to fiscal year 28. In the coming weeks, we will be working with city staff to ensure any local barriers are addressed, including zoning and any other legal requirements that are needed to make sure this is a successful pilot here in Burlington. And with that, I'm gonna pass it over to the chief and then we'll take informal gaggle questions, I guess, whatever a gaggle is. I, you know what gaggle is? Did you know what? Yeah. Am I the only person? Okay, yeah. okay, cool. Well, I'm humble enough to know that. Hey, Steve. Hi. Oh, hi. Hi. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I just wanted to speak really quickly to my support of the OPC in Burlington. Uh, so far to date, uh, we have seen 150 overdoses as of Sunday. That is down from the 204 that we saw at to this date in 2023. It's a 36% decrease. Um, our average per month in 2023 was 37. Our average currently is 27. So we are seeing um, some real headway against this crisis in this city with the work being done by this city. Um, the fire department began the community response team in uh, response to this crisis. And we have had folks out there uh, on a daily basis working in this population. What I've received for feedback is meeting people where they are when they're not in crisis is the most impactful way to meet them. and. Um, my feeling is, and it's taken me a minute to get here, but my feeling is that the OPC will allow that to happen. It will allow folks to meet folks when they're not in crisis or, um, you know, where they are and allow conversations to happen and um, people to feel like they can be helped and not judged. So. I think that's an important uh, step toward reduction, harm reduction, and um, getting people the help they need. Thanks, Chief. And this is Chief Michael Lachance, uh, Chief of our Fire Department. I should have made a much better introduction than that. Sorry. Uh, no, it, you I don't apologize. I, I apologize. I introduced myself as well. I guess. Well, in gaggles, we do it informally, yes. I think. So <laughs> I'm just going to overuse that entirely. So make sure it gets somewhere in someone's shot. Okay, great. I also want to acknowledge that we are joined by se uh, several folks from the city, including um, some of my other department heads. And I really appreciate the ones who are able to come, of course. But this shows how this is really this opioid crisis has been. Um, uh, in, impacting us across the city, across the state for that matter. But I really appreciate, we have our director of our library here, director of business and workforce development here as well. Uh, this is really something that has impacted us throughout the city and we're working really hard to find solutions. And again, OPCs are a critical piece of the puzzle. And I'm so, um, so pleased, frankly, to be able to have this as part of our options here in Burlington. So we're happy to answer questions that folks might have. Any idea on location? 
I knew you were going to ask that question. So the, the ink's not even dry yet on the, on the bill, of course, but I think what is important to, to know is we're starting to get to work. We need to make sure that the, the location is cited properly. We need, and most importantly, that the public is fully engaged in the community process about where we select things. As someone who's lived in the Old North End for 20 years, for example, we hold a lot of critical supports and services that are very much needed uh, for folks who are the most vulnerable. We have the Elmwood Pod location, for example. We have needle exchange um, on the edges of the Old North End, high concentration of emergency housing for people, which is critical. I'm very proud of that from our neighborhood. And we need to make sure we're really citing throughout the city a location that makes sense, that's also respectful of other services. We want to collate, locate where it's the best practice, but we also want to be mindful of impacts on community. And as I said um, uh, initially, we want to make sure the community is really engaged and making sure we're finding the right spot. What's the timeline look like uh, for when you're hoping to open? Well, I'm taking this very seriously that in the bill itself, it says uh, it, will, it will be um, effective upon passage. That's pretty rare in legislation as a former legislator. It shows how immediate, immediate and um, emergent this issue is. So I want us to start meeting um, as quickly as possible. I met just yesterday, a few minutes after hearing that instead of not overriding the veto, we suddenly did override the veto uh, on that roller coaster. I met with the city council president to even start having our initial conversations of how to coordinate between the mayor's office and council of how to get things started. So internally, we have zoning to consider, we have legal pieces to consider, uh, we have community engagement to consider, and then of course, as we are ready as a city, engaging our community partners and then the community at large. Would you hope a year from now that the center would be open? Certainly within, within a year, I hope as soon as possible. But again, we are the first pilot. So I wanna make sure we do this right, that we don't rush things or cut corners, that we have the supports needed to make sure this is successful. Uh, I have a great responsibility to the people, the people whose lives that we're, we're trying to save here and impact and the people of China, um, we're trying to help encourage get to treatment. That's an important thing to get right. So I wanna make sure that we are not rushing things, uh, but moving with an urgency that is really needed on this critical issue. Well, it sounds like you have, when you eventually do open the center, it sounds like you have adequate funding for one year. So I'm assuming you've been thinking about further years. We have funding all the way through fiscal year 28. So that is part of the bill. The underlying bill is a commitment because there was no way that any location, be it Broadway or Burlington, wherever it would be, could fund this locally. And so I'm glad that advocates and uh, the legislature agreed to have multiple years to make sure that such a pilot could be successful without overburdening a local community. So we have funding for the uh, up until through fiscal year 28. Yes, this came up a lot during the campaign. So for five months, we talked about the opioid crisis, the um, the issues of folks who are struggling with substance use disorder in general, but specifically opioids. And uh, it, a lot of people, I think, took to heart the, the deep complexities that there are, um, understanding that the opioid crisis today is very different than 20 years ago. The toxicity in our drug supply is real. Um, the high level of addiction that's, uh, that happens to people's brain chemistry is real. You talk to any resident um, at, up at UVM Medical Center or probably any medical professional, they, they need us to understand, and I understand now, this is a severe medical disorder and understanding how we respond to virtually every other medical disorder with care and response and treatment and, um, and understanding is exactly what is deserving of folks who are struggling with substance use disorder. So as we talk about that and put a human face to, to it and understand that we are literally losing lives that we do not need to lose, to me, that starts to shift the culture and understanding that people have around it. And then when you also talk about where uh, there are so many other countries that have established overdose prevention centers and successfully run them for years, and there's a lot of evidence out of Canada and other places that show that there has not only an impact on saving lives, but there's a secondary benefit where people are now no longer needing to use, uh, to use in a public space, for example, where needle recovery is, um, uh, and, and recovering needles um, uh, the numbers of needles being discarded drops where even low levels of crime numbers drop because people have a place where they are supported where they get to um, be able to build the critical relationships that get them to treatment so to me these kinds of conversations and level setting with people helps us to change the attitudes so that we can be a community of care uh, when dealing with this great crisis and, yeah. so on the location you mentioned the old north end um, so are you saying maybe you don't want to overburden a certain Obviously, on transit lines and stuff like that. 
that. Mm -hmm. So I think it is really important to think about sort of like a rubric of things with also, of course, an equity lens. And that includes looking at access to public transportation, uh, where other things are co-located without over concentration of things. I want to be mindful of places where people who are in recovery are going for their services so that there is a, um, a trauma informed and um, uh, just location uh, considered. I also want to make sure that we're working with our medical providers to do best, um, best, just best practice of where we should locate such things. I want to work with the fire department, with our police department, to make sure we're thinking about where they they would best um, recommend a location of such a center. So once the center is up and running, um, how do we best get people there? Perhaps people who either are kind of uh, pushing help away or are just comfortable with using at home or using out in public. Mm -hmm. So part of this is making sure that we are starting to build those those relationships that are fundamentally built on trust. And that takes time, although I've also heard anecdotally where people are hungry for this option to know where they can go, um, get their test their drugs, be able to kind of not have to use in the shadows. Even our own state Department of Health has put out a bulletin in the last year or so that says, do not use in in um, in private. Do not use it kind of alone, because again, the toxicity in our drug supply is so potent that there's a high risk that you will overdose and then be alone and and um, and potentially die. And that is a real reality here in Vermont. We've heard so many of these stories, not just even here in Burlington. So I am sure that through good uh, good site placement, good public dialogue and engagement, and then working most critically with our partners, our medical providers, our folks in the recovery services and and elsewhere that we can really get the word out and then build that trust that people can come and be supported. And ideally, again, find a path towards uh, treatment, which is, again, most one of the most important things that, that the center represents. Does the health department have any role going forward in how this will operate as far as, I don't know, just, no one's done this before. So is Burlington going to make up how it all works and who, what types of folks will work there? Or is there some still some collaboration with the health department? So in the bill itself, I was actually um, early on, I collaborated with the, the firefighters, uh, the BP, uh, BFFA um, and the fire department to really make sure we had language in there that was reflective of the kind of staff we need working there. Um, in part, again, with best practice, but also to make sure we weren't uh, placing even more burden on our current local fire department. Um, so that's already in the legislation. And I'm gonna look to Joe to, or others here around any rule setting and rulemaking that's being made in the Department of Health on this. Yeah, the department will establish guidelines and they will also uh, establish the, the grant, the grants for the grant funding. The regulations uh, are completed by September 25th. Great, thank you for that. And then of course the city council here in Burlington needs to sign off on any grant that we submit. Uh, once that's all established, so there'll be uh, that is required under under the now law. Given that um, Dr. Levine hasn't been a full throated endorser of this, um, he's kind of wavered. Do you have any concerns about the health department's role in kind of crafting the guidelines? Um, I expect them to rise to the occasion. This is now law, and I also expect the governor to become a better partner in this, regardless of his personal opinion on it, because. Um, a supermajority in both the House and Senate, that's what it takes to override a veto, has clearly said this is needed. Um, and so for me, this is uh, this is about making sure as a legislator, when laws are passed, uh, then the administration must implement it. And so we are here and I stand ready as now the mayor of Burlington to make sure that we hold the Department of Health accountable. But I would much rather them be partners here as we break some significant ground. Uh, again, at the heart of this, of this matter is saving lives and supporting Vermonters. So. I'm pretty sure the mission of the Department of Health and hopefully the, the mission of our governor is to make sure that we are all collectively working together to support Vermonters. Management of the site, is this something like you did with the pause where you put it out to bid for who's going to operate it or will it just be the health, health department? And what's that look like? So that's all part of the starting to put the pieces together. So TBD. Great. <laughs> yeah. So you're not sure if it, the city is going to run it, if it's going to be like a place like the Howard Center running it, like all of that is still. We're still going to work on this. Um, I will say that in general, the city is the city. We are not a health um, health provider. I want to make sure we have the best uh, and most uh, equipped people uh, running this this center. Again, we, I want it to be successful, but we're at the very early stages of figuring all that out. One more question for me. This, yep. this was one of those bills that was really, whoops, really close to not getting that override yesterday. Were you nervous about it at all? Or did you expect this, this outcome or expect it to be close? 
I knew it was gonna be close in the Senate. I was proud of my former House colleagues because I knew there would always be a healthy margin in the House um, to override. Uh, and I, you know, I worked hard with the Burlington delegation. Not everyone was on board on the Burlington delegation. There was one vote. Uh, so I'm, I'm disappointed with that senator, but I'm also proud of the other 16 other people who represent Burlington, who ho heard clearly that this city was ready. Two different um, city councils unanimously supported resolutions uh, from prior governments here locally that we are not only ready, it is needed. And I'm really appreciative again of our state delegation colleagues who heard that call and took that seriously and um, helped us have the outcome we have today. So this is this center is the primary purpose is around saving lives and as I mentioned before substance use disorder including for opioids is a medical disorder um, and I look to other countries that have had OPCs established and look at the evidence and the and the um, uh, the study of those centers for many years now that shows crime actually drops low crime actually uh, drops around where those centers are located. Uh, we have bigger complex issues going on in Burlington, and so it's not as if this is only the one one thing we are doing. I'm actually working with uh, on community safety. It has been my number one priority after solving our budget issue um, to then really tackle the complexities that go into uh, making our community safer. And so all that work continues. This uh, is just one piece of it, which I'm again very excited that it's a piece we can now uh, also start to weave into our strategies to make Burlington safer. Mayor, I want to I wanna congratulate you, and uh, I want to say that on behalf of the advocates in Vermont, we are behind you 100%. You know, specifically about the location of the overdose prevention center, Chief Perchance, Mary Danko, you have people who are in direct contact with people injecting drugs in Burlington. I'd like to see a task force form that can collect data from them mm -hmm. on where they would like mm -hmm. the overdose. Yeah, no, I appreciate that suggestion. Um, and as the department heads know, collaboration is pretty much my middle name at this point. They're all like, collaborate, collaborate, collaborate. So I, I really try to bring my department heads together to tackle big challenges. We've been doing that on camping. Um, community safety is our next topic, and this will certainly be, might even jump ahead um, in, in terms of uh, other pieces we have in the queue. Uh, because I think you're right, they have been on the front lines of this uh, right alongside our fire um, and, and police um, officers, and it's, I take all of their input really seriously to make sure we're getting this right. Yep. And also, I just want to say, I came into this very late as a, um, as a legislator and now as a mayor, and so there, I want to emphasize how many people came before me in terms of putting the years into advocacy, including um, my former colleague, uh, representative, uh, former representative Selena Colburn. She put, I think, the first bill in on this like 10 years ago. So there are, this is like, this is really a, um, what is that called, relay race in terms of uh, elect elected leaders trying to really move policy. And I just happen to be at the end of this and, and happen to be the mayor of the, of, of the city that's ready to be the first pilot. Um, but I stand on the shoulders of so many more people. Right, right. Uh, so actually, uh, members of my staff are going to be meeting with um, our, our planning department to start looking at zoning. As I mentioned, I've already met with the city council president uh, to start that initial conversation. We're going to have internal conversations first so that we know what there is there, uh, including with department heads. Uh, and then probably from there, engage city council and figure out a community engagement plan from there. Yep. Thank you all. Anyone want to sweat more? No? Uh, you sure? Okay, thanks for coming all, I appreciate it. Thank you. Chief, thanks for being here. All right. Did you wanna answer any of those questions? No. Hi everyone, I'm, my name is Ed Baker. I'm a person with lived experience of uh, drug addiction, uh, including injection drug use and homelessness. I've been in my own personal uh, journey of recovery for 39 years which led me into alcohol counseling, later on advocacy, and now full-time activism in support of harm reduction, and lately, specifically, an overdose prevention center in downtown Burlington. What occurred yesterday in our, in our legislature uh, is 104 hearts in the House of Representatives and 20 hearts in the Senate joined together, 124 hearts, and they changed history. They made 
healthcare history in Vermont. Compassion won out. Compassion defeated stigma. And as a result, lives will be saved. And this is unequivocal. There is no doubt whatsoever about this. An overdose prevention center will open in Burlington, Vermont. We will serve the most at-risk population. People dying, interestingly and tragically, at the rate of one per week in Chittenden County for the past number of years. We're, we are going to do something about this. Um, I couldn't be happier, but also I'm, 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 I'm very suspicious about obstruction, about delaying, about stalling, and about other uh, very small-minded techniques to not allow this to be a success. So going forward, I would urge every one of you, every Vermonter, every legislature, every, um, you know, the governor, the health commissioner, all your employees, we need to join together and understand that we're, we're saving the lives of fellow Vermonters and we can only do it if we work together full force, full force, no delays, no obstructionism, we have to join in this. So, so thank you. That's my hope. Pe people ask me often, uh, why, why do people inju inject uh, animal tranquilizers, Ed? Why do, why do people inject fentanyl, a lethal poison? What, what is going on here? You know, first of all, if you looked at the uh, self-care function of the brain, the self-care function of the brain in people with addiction, it just doesn't work. It's flat out. It's not informing them of safe practices or dangerous practices. They have addiction. They're going to get the drug and they're going to self-administer the drug, period. That's what addiction is. The other reason is people with addiction can't get anything else. It's called supply shock. Since 2013, 14, 15, around there, fentanyl was introduced into our drug supply, the illicit drug supply in America. And today, last year, 2023 in, in uh, Vermont, fentanyl was involved in 100% of opioid overdose deaths, 100%. There is no heroin left. There is only fentanyl, and tragically, it's laced with xylazine, a horse tranquilizer which causes terrible uh, tissue infection and uh, sores that are practically incurable without, without medical attention. So we have these people, many times, our family members, our fellow Vermonters, our neighbors, literally at the mercy of merciless international crime organizations reaping wild profit from their addiction. And we are not, in my experience, I mean, it's wonderful that this overdose prevention center bill got passed yesterday, but, but we need to rush to their aid. You know, we need to behave like there is a public health emergency because there is a public health emergency. These people, each week, each additional week that this overdose prevention center does not open in Burlington, one resident of Chittenden County will die. So when I say urgency, I mean urgency. And I know we have the skill to do this. We have the resources to do this. We have the will to do this. We have the science to do this. It's as if we have a puzzle, and not a large puzzle, a puzzle with all the pieces face up, and we're looking at it. We know where each piece goes, and this puzzle is going to save lives. And for some reason, we just haven't put it together yet. We need to put it together, and it's political will. Political will, really from the top down, from the top down and from the bottom up and both sideways. And we need political will joining together um, <clears throat> to save the lives of our children. When you, when, you, when you meet a parent who's lost a child to accidental drug overdose, and I've met quite a few, and, and you get to know them and you hug them and they weep, and you feel their heart beating and your heart starts to beat in response to their heart and you feel their grief, when you experience that, you, don't, you never, ever, ever forget it and you become committed to doing something now to save lives in Vermont. 